Okay, bro, welcome, welcome to uh, Supernatural Fitness um, TV. If you want to tell the guys who you are and what you do. Hello, guys. My name is David Solomona. I uh, play rugby league for Bradford Bulls. And uh, I've been playing league for a long time now. So, yeah, that's my job professionally. Okay, so the first question is, um, you've been playing rugby for how many years? Uh, professionally for about 13 years. Okay, so when did you realise you wanted to be a rugby player and that you wanted to become the champion that you are? What age? Um, to be honest, I, I didn't take it seriously until I, until the, my first professional contract, so until I was about 17, 18. Um, never took it seriously at all. To be honest, it was just uh, something that I'd done in my spare time. And, um, you know, it was my you know, my path had already been written for me, something that I didn't realise. So, um, you know, I think not until my early adult years that I start realising that this is something that I could I could do. Okay, so what do you spend most of your time doing up to sort of 17? So you must have had some talent, some gifts before you got involved in rugby. Um, what, what did those talents, what did those gifts lead you towards sort of tell you what you were going to be doing? Did they give you any clues? No, I think uh, for me personally, um, you know, I was doing stuff that had nothing to do with sport. I mean, uh, I was heavily involved in church. Um, you know, most of my friends were um, playing sport in that, you know, trying to crack uh, first grade, you know, uh, in Australia in that. And uh, I chose really just to stay at church and hang out with my mates at church. And um, from there, kind of like out of the blues, it was, it was for me personally, it was just something that just happened out of the blues. I mean, um, I felt if, if you asked any of my, my friends that I played with growing up, you know, I wouldn't even be in, you know, above average player. You know, I was, I was, uh, I felt that I, I had done enough to get by, but you know, I wasn't someone that someone would look at and say, oh, he's going to be a good, good player in the future. So, you know, I think uh, I just got to a certain age where, um, one year I just decided I'm not going to, I'm going to stop playing rugby league and just go to church, and then, then within a year later I was signed to a professional contract so okay uh, so far that's that's interesting because a lot of people will say that people will already decide what you are and we talk about people labeling kids and saying you're going to be a rugby player or you're going to be a footballer and for most of those guys they'd already labeled you and said there's no way you're going to be a professional rugby player you're not the best at school you're not the best in your year group there's no way you're going to make it and yet just like that your path just changed and you became what you were supposed to be so it's almost like even though you were decided against that whatever you were meant to be was going to happen is that how you feel your sort of career sort of came about that there was no real almost not really a choice for you but that it was just going to happen yeah, yeah no nah, I, I think there was there's you know one direction there I'm a bit better that you said i wasn't good at school because i was very good at school that my studies in that so um you know but i mean in regards to sport and that and the crew the, the crew path that i'm at now I think if someone met me when they were 16, they wouldn't believe that there was a path that I was supposed to lead. I mean, yeah. um, you know, I chose to go in one direction. And uh, for me personally, you know, I, I felt that I had I had the talents and the tools to, to, to actually play sport in that. But I, myself personally, I chose not to pursue it. I, I chose that, you know, my heart was to to be with my, my friends at church and involve myself in church and involve myself with my friends at church and that. So, you know, uh, I think um, it helped me be more humble when I actually did did uh, get the opportunity yeah. to play in that and you know I'm, I'm friends now with, with guys that growing up were the best players from when I was nine until I was 18 they were making rep teams in that you know and you know I think them themselves would say you know I played against this guy and he wasn't really good when we were younger but you know I think uh, for me personally it's, it's humbled my personality more than my you know my physical stature in regards to the way that I look at the game in that. Yeah so it's, it's interesting did any of those guys that didn't quite make it so you started off where you it seems that you made better lifestyle choices mm. in terms of what you chose to do in your spare time as a young person like i said we spoke to some guys and myself included who made the wrong choices as a young person mm. and those were unhealthy lifestyle choices which really almost took me away from my destiny away from being mm. the best athlete that i could be you've managed to do your sport by making the right healthy lifestyle choices to mm. start with do you know any of the guys or any of your friends that should have been following their destiny, should have been good rugby players, just based on how they were when they were younger, but made the wrong lifestyle choices and now didn't yeah, fulfill their I grew up potential. In, I grew up in New Zealand, man, where, you know, the whole atmosphere is literal stories of people who should have made it but didn't. And, oh. um, 
You know, I've, I've got friends personally. I've got friends that have uh, actually made it into rugby league before me, and uh, you know, have fallen to the wayside. Uh, whether that be because they decided to party it up once they got there, or whether they decided to, um, you know, have kids early and it, it, it took their focus away from football. You know, I've got a lot of stories of friends that have um, actually had the. Um, uh, one of my friends that actually played here in England, uh, Philip Luluai. Um I went to school from from my whole college years, and he was the first kid in my school to have a kid um, um, in my year. So he had a kid when we were sixteen, wow. and so um, and he's made it professionally now. So I mean, he's a he's a perfect example of someone who, you know, did have the 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 rough start to it, and you know, had every every choice to not make it, and he he decided to you know fight through that. So I mean, um, I think uh, you know. Even though everyone's path was already written for them, you know it's it's up to them to make their own opportunity to take to grab every opportunity because you know like I said there was there was friends that did make it earlier and uh, I did have another friend who um, was had a baby almost four months after Philip yeah and uh, yeah sadly he was the first person in my school to to get a contract over in Australia okay and uh, he's fallen to the wayside now and that's you know possibly because he moved to Australia and decided he wanted to party it up and uh, you know he, he, uh, for me I, I felt he hadn't built that foundation for his personality and for you know he, he hadn't grounded himself you know in his life you know in order for him to go to Australia and be successful. Yeah. So uh, um, a lot of the fans and a lot of the kids out there kind of look at your life and feel that it's, it's easy and everybody wants to be in your shoes but tell us a little bit about some of the things that are difficult about being a professional and the responsibilities you face in representing a city representing Bradford and having to go out there every game and perform knowing that everybody's hopes and their whole week can depend on what you do. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, the pressures, the pressures, uh, you know, a, a lot like everyone else. Plus, you know, you've got the pressure of, they had the pressure of being someone that represents a city, you know, represents a town. Uh, for me, I, I represent my family, I represent yep. my, my church, I represent uh, my culture. So for me to uh, go out there, I mean, the, the stuff that we deal with, you know, evolves around our whole life. I mean, what we do, um, you know, the food we eat, the time we go to sleep, you yeah. know, everything revolves around our, our sports. So, I mean, you know, we can't exactly say, oh, I want to do this today. Everything revolves around, you know, what we're doing that weekend, uh, training wise and playing wise. So, I mean, you know, I don't want to make it out like, you know, it's the toughest job in the world because, you know, well, I'm very fortunate that I enjoy it. But, um, you know, there are there are a lot of uh, pressures for professional sports people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as you can see, uh, eating a lot of food is one of the pressures that sometimes I fall into, man. Okay, so you obviously need to eat a lot to maintain the muscle, build the muscle mass that you need, mass that you need. Um, you've obviously got to eat very healthy. You've talked about needing to recover quickly yeah. and be ready for the games. Give us a, a typical example of, of what you'd have, some of the foods that you'd eat to, to stay healthy and and to be able to recover quicker. Yeah, um, you know, I'm I really uh, into my um, supplements, but um, one of my friends, Simi, keeps coming over to my house and stealing my supplements. So, uh, nah, you know, I, I really, I, you know, I'm, I'm a great believer of um, eating a lot of chicken. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think, uh, if you don't know, JC's he's uh, the king of eating chicken, so uh, <laughs> he's taught me that, a lot of lean chicken in it. So, um, you know, I, I like, uh, Sometimes I carbo load a bit too much, but um, you know I like I really enjoy trying to eat. I think one thing that I learned from you was uh, that little gap in between training, trying to trying to um, rep replenish your muscles in that. Yeah. So uh, I think it's something that you've uh, instilled in a lot of players, and uh, for me, it's something that in my career I didn't realize until you know 12 years into it. So uh, you know it's something that uh, you know you can feel the benefits of, and uh, it helps you recover a lot more yeah. when you you know eating at the right times or trying to eat the right food. 